My channel generally is about positivity, and I like to keep a positive edge. But I have to be honest with you guys, I've been doing a little string of matches lately that I, at first glance, disagree with the judges. Like this one here, Johnny O. Jackson versus Hidetada Yamagishi at the 2010 Mr. Olympia event. At first glance, guys, I believe that the placings were incorrect and the do not go by this one. This is not a front relaxed position for Johnny O. Jackson. He's kind of, he's about to strike a pose. Couldn't actually find one. Not that the symmetry round means anything anyway when you only have the front relaxed position. Unfair. But anyway, I don't always disagree at the end of the day. Let's go on into the poses, beginning with the front double bicep pose. This is the muscularity round because it involves muscles that's why they call it the muscularity round anyway guys i'm kind of beating around the bush this one is definitely not what you would call a no-brainer this is basically upper body versus lower body johnny o jackson has the advantage i believe in the arms his arms are a little bit long a little too long the bone structure but when you look at the muscle separation of the triceps biceps it is much better than Hidetada, but I could see some people liking the more fuller, longer biceps with the probably better forearms. But the chest, the lats, and the abs, the, the stomach, in my opinion, all goes to Johnny O. Jackson. Bit of a funny-looking belly button there for Hidetada, but I know that sounds mean. But hey, guys, we're judging physiques. These are the greatest physiques in the world, and of course we're going to notice something like that. Anyway, if I was up there, they would have picked my little tiny legs apart and all this and that that I have wrong with me. So, this is what we do. Hidetada, definitely an advantage in the lag department. In the calves, especially. Johnny, very weak in that department. And again, guys, I know that sounds mean, but this is what it is. At the end of the day, I think that upper body is a little bit too much. So, a slight edge to Johnny. Here in the front, lat spread. And it is basically the same thing, guys. Good legs versus a good upper body. And those little tiny calves of Johnny O. Jackson. And like I said, guys, I'm not being mean. This is this is judging a physique. I'm not saying Johnny is a, is a bad man because he can't grow calves. Who knows? I myself have been blessed with fairly low calf insertions. So I do respond to training. It looks like to me Johnny had torn or had some nerve damage in one of his calves. And why overtrain the other one? You're going to be oblonged. So it's not his fault at all. There's probably something went wrong with his calf. So anyway, enough of that explanation. I would also give Johnny the front lat spread due to the, again, the upper body. So this is a pick em, guys. This is upper body versus lower body. And the side chest is basically the same thing. It is just overwhelming, I believe, the upper body. For Johnny, when you look at the chest and even the traps, you can see the traps. And again, this is a broken record, guys. This is a lag advantage for Hidetada, for sure. But still, here in the side tricep. Now this one, I'm going to go with Hidetada. The, the calves are really being drawn out here, this weak point. But not only that, of course, Hidetada winning in the lags this whole match. But this time, I believe he is blessed a little bit more in the tricep development and that's crazy when you think about how strong Johnny O Jackson is a little side note Johnny O Jackson is a lot stronger than Hidetada and if you're gonna argue that point don't don't bother Hidetada I'm sure is a very powerful man but when you look at the back developments you can plainly see that Johnny O. Jackson would be the stronger man, considering a lot of your lifts, your deadlifts, and things of that nature are due to that back development, believe it or not. And if some people don't actually believe, I've argued with people. The guys with the big traps, I say, they can usually deadlift a little bit more, and people argue with me and say, no, it's the guys with the big quads thinking no quads are for squats and anyway everybody uses a different muscle but johnny o jackson is a deadlift monster and look at the lower lat insertions and guys like franco colombo one of my favorite bodybuilders of all time look at his lower back and what was he good at 
deadlifts. And, of course, King Ronnie Coleman. The back shots are basically like the same thing over and over again. So guys, the judges, the first thing they see is the legs. They're sitting down below. So I could understand them giving the the points to Hidetada. But I am a fan of the upper body. And I don't think the, the lag development and the legs and the glutes are that bad for Johnny O. The calves are. Rear double bicep. This is an even weaker shot in the upper body for Hidetada. And it's the same story in the lag development. If you clear, if you look, take a good close look there, the glutes may be tighter conditioned for Johnny O, but the hamstrings might be a little more diced up for Hidetada. So it is fairly close in the lag development, but the back development, look at the thick back on Johnny O. Jackson. Anyway, Johnny gets the back developments, in my opinion, but it is arguable. Ab and thigh, cover up the upper body. Just look at the legs. Who's winning this one? Hidetada is for sure. This one really shows the weak calf and the, the decent calves for Hidetada. Haratiti. <laughs> Hidetada. I apologize to him. No disrespect meant to either of these guys from picking apart their calves or their belly button, per se. I'm not being mean. This is just what it is. It is what it is. Anyway, that belly button does come into play in this ab and thigh shot compared to a just godlike set of abs for Johnny O'Jackson. He had some world-class parts, I'm here to tell you. Pecs, world-class, abs, world-class, and the back development. Very important part in bodybuilding. It is a shame that he had the genetic inability to develop those legs a little bit larger. So again, this is a pick em, but I go with the aesthetics. I go with the flow. Johnny O. Jackson, most muscular. You now this one, honestly, Hidetada actually looks very good when you look at the pecs. It's a good display. He's like a mini Jay Cutler, so to speak. Actually, no, he's not. I don't even know why I said that. He looks nothing like Jay Cutler. A little bit too much medication. It was fan request Friday last night. And me and the goldfish, we got, you know, we had a few bottles yeah I, I hang out with my goldfish little goldie anyway those traps of johnny o jackson he looks like a beast he looks like a monster either way i'm giving the most muscular to johnny o jackson and my mood the the amount of medication that i had last night may swayed my judging in this one i don't really feel like training legs today I'm a little tired so i'm not judging the legs as well I could do some chest, I could do some back. So I, I like the back and the chest today a little bit more. No, I'm just joking. It is a very close one to be in all seriousness, ladies and gentlemen. But Johnny O. Jackson, I have to disagree with the judges on this one. Both of them were missing things here and there. A little bit of a weak back for Hidetada. He had the belly button thing. And yes, it does mean something to me, but we can't forget Johnny had those weak set of calves and a little undersized in the lag department. But other than that, he was an awesome bodybuilder with some world-class top 10 body parts, I'm here to tell you. So he is my pick, but I really can't argue with the judges when you consider the lag department and the calves. And the conditioning as well was pretty close. Johnny O. Jackson, he's my pick. I disagree with the judges. He should have placed 10th. He Tata in 11th. Hit thumbs up on this one, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Have a great day.